T-Man 978 Chill Review. Hello everyone, T-Man 978. Thanks for a lovely donation from my bank account to Toy Dojo. I can bring you this review of Fans Toys Recorder, FT-55 who comes with Fast Forward, and FT-55B, their cassettes, which are loudspeaker, amplifier, and erase, aka Transformers Generation 1 cartoon accurate mostly. Blaster, Rewind, Steel Jaw, Eject, and Ram Horn. I like this artwork. If you want to see more of the box, Google. Google is your friend. As normal, you get the instruction manual. The cassettes all come in cassette mode, but the instructions are from robot mode or, yeah, robot mode to cassette mode, so that's not going to help you. I did a separate transformation video for both recorder and all the cassettes but I, I did the cassettes in one video and recorder and his own separate video so check that out link in the description they all have their own individual credit card quality collector's card right here with tiny the tiniest bio the bio for this guy is the same as recorder so yeah these bios are Tiny, you need a magnifying glass or young people eyes, which I, I unfortunately don't have. All the cassettes come in these old school jewel cases right here, where you can actually store them. They actually have the little spindle thing so you can keep them into place. Each and every one of them. What they don't come with is the Autobot logos that you see on them. I believe I got these Autobot logos from Show Z Store. They like to give you free Autobot logos. Recorder comes with these golden speakers right there. It is painted like a gunmetal-y color in the center, which I never noticed. Or actually, is it this color? Mm, I, I can't tell, but yeah, there you go with that. He also has four other faces for you to choose from which I'll show on his face this gun and a completely different toy accurate head that I do not care about but I gotta show it off I guess in this video because that's what y'all expect let's just show you this now I'll show it on the body at some point but the faces aren't compatible with this head even though I have a separate transformation video I'm gonna give you guys help with how he comes packaged. <sighs> Cause some of y'all need help with every damn thing and make sure to comment on it. Yes, I'm below the one. Anywho, first thing, the arms are not stretched out. They need to be pulled far down so you can actually rotate this. I was looking at this, I was like, that ain't right. Cause it ain't right. We need to spread the legs, bring this forward. And as you bring that forward, we can slide this forward as far as you can so that we can actually rotate this to the back once we get it to the back we can lift that up and then shift this forward once again and that's good the feet under here and under here there's this little guy right there that needs to actually come forward and latch into place. I'm guessing it gives the foot more stability because when it's not in place, make sure you push that. In fact, I'm gonna bring the toe forward to get that all the way into place. Now lift it up. When it's not in place, it seems like this wiggles and you can't really stand them up well. And the last thing, right here, there's a little clip. You have to push in right here and force the foot up to cover that, to keep the shin in place on both sides. This one's tougher on me, but there you are. Now you're good to go out of package besides changing his face because I don't like it.
but I'll get to that face later. He's the star of the show. I'm going to show off the cassettes first. All right, here are the cassette Autobots. It was exciting to see them in the movie because Blaster never had his own cassettes during season two. Uh, I don't know why they didn't think of releasing him with cassettes at the same time, but when they debuted in the movie, that, that was at least exciting that he could do something. So Blaster remained important and they didn't kill him off. But the theme of these guys seems to be Gappy Hollowness. <laughs> uh, let's start with, uh, this is fast forward, erase, amplifier and loudspeaker, AKA rewind. It's, it's crazy that they gave him a whole different function. Fast forward, eject, ram horn and steel jaw. But let's start with this guy. They have a mostly cartoon accurate face. This one has a more orange face while this one has a yellower face, but they both have blue eyes. They both have the sparkly paint. Oh, I don't know if Fan Stories have always been doing this, but they definitely have sparkly paint and their figures going forward. But when I was talking about the gappy hollowness, we have this. Like with this darker one, it's not so bad because it could be an optical illusion, but with this one, yeah. Compared to their version of Rumble, well, frenzy, whatever. Um, he has gaps, but mostly at the top. It's not all the way down. And he did have gaps on the back of the thighs, which they did fill in right here. And they both have the hollow leg syndrome. So there's that. But this guy at least also has the two guns you can store on his back. This gun, this little tiny gun, which they tried to be as faithful to the cartoon as possible, does not fit into the back. And it separates into two parts, which we, you will see in the transformation video. This has a habit of dangling, so it might be quite flaccid and you'll have to keep fixing it. Anyhow, you see what it looks like. Articulation, head rotates on a mushroom peg. They didn't give them secondary heads. So there's that. When you make them look up, it has that going on right there. The hollow gap in front of the chest. So yeah, the shoulders move up and down on a hinge so it can be as low as this and high as that if you want and it's on a ball joint so you can get this a little bit <sighs> my brain because it has double jointed elbows and this is like clearly like a separate piece it seems like my brain wants it to have bicep swivel but it doesn't the wrist does that because of the way that sculpt, my brain wants it to have waist rotation, but it doesn't. I like this type of thing going on right here, so the leg can kick up more than 90 and kick back a bit. One of the reasons why you shouldn't pull down on the, hold the legs while pulling up on the chest for transformation, the legs are on the exposed mushroom peg, so you can pull that out. A problem I have with both of these guys, and this one is the worst, these flaps on the back of the thighs do not stay shut. On this one, it's only this leg, but you see on the blue one, yeah. But we got thigh rotation and the leg goes out to the side all the way. The knee can bend because of the way it transforms. Actually, it bends 90 degrees, honestly. Um, even, let's see, it seemed like it was bending more with that. Nope. Is designed to stop right there. That's shocking. The ankle is infinitely forward and it goes back, but when it goes back, you have to worry about this metal piece getting in the way. But you can stretch it a bit to compensate. And it does have ankle pivot inward and outward, and it rotates on a ball joint. Look at this. Here's one thing that's weird. The ankle pivot cutout is on the outside instead of the inside. 
on both figures, so that is accurate. But, yeah, if this thing had bicep swivel and a waist, I would probably like him more. But they are posable. I wish it came with two guns, especially for the price. Just throw in another gun, even if it doesn't fit inside of him on in cassette mode. Give me another gun for the price. My final thought before getting off of this mold. I don't like these type of shoulders and no bicep rotation. Makes you have to have the gun sideways. If you want to point out to that direction. Other than that, it's just straight. 5 POA style. So, I wish they would have engineered bicep swivel. Since it doesn't have traditional arms that hinge outward up to here and rotate. That ball joint does not rotate outward. But well, you can get them into some decent poses. Not a lot. Amplifier. He looks cool. Mostly one solid color. Except a little bit of gunmetal and the gold right there. Of course, you don't get that sticker, like I mentioned. Here is the eye. The mouth is capable of opening a little tiny bit. And the head rotates. Goes up and down a little bit like that. And the neck can look all the way up. And that's as far down as you get. Forward, there is no forward on this joint right here besides that. It can go back, honestly, that looks like it's supposed to be a joint, but I have not successfully, yeah, it's just super, super tight. But I showed it working, and now this one moves, and this foot comes down. They are very tight joints. This is a tight joint, this, and the toe. And getting the transformation, I'm going to complain about it in the transformation video. Getting his legs to slide back to form the butt is very, extremely difficult. And I don't like this. I don't know why fans always design things where they're just on hinges. It doesn't like lock in the place. I don't have confidence in that. It's like basically leave it like this or transform it sparingly because eventually... I'm pretty sure this is going to get weak if you keep going back and forth. But Cappy Hollowness, that. Like right at the top, you're supposed to just look at him from the side and never look at him from right here. And now loudspeaker. He's mostly good. He does, let me turn the lights down. There's yellow paint in the eyes right there. His mouth is capable of opening all the way. His head, it was tight at first, but that can rotate. And it can look down a bit if you have its, the main spread out a certain type of way. This can go up to there, come back a bit, and up to here. And that paw can do that. The legs can go all the way back, come up to here, up to there. Not really back. The paw can go back. And the paw can come forward. The tail can come down. So you can get him into some flying robo cat poses right there or lunging. The mane is locked into place. The body is locked into place. And his gappiness is right there. And if you look at him from a certain angle, right there. So definitely don't look at him from that angle. <laughs> I like the way all of these feel because of their die cast, but they are animal cassettes because they're so small, you can only engineer in a certain amount of articulation that can work a certain amount of way. And it's a miracle they puffed out his body this much with, with the head. Oh yeah. All of them, they're nicely painted. Definitely. They feel good, but that's the story for all of fans' toys. 
nice paint, nice feel, but then the articulation is sometimes lackluster and the transformation is usually difficult. I think these have the least difficult. This one probably is the most complicated because of transforming this bar right there. And this one, he is the easiest besides not being able to pull these out with a spud, without a spudger. And then you have this guy where you have to assemble the gun. So yeah, but they're all right, cool accessories meant to stand next to you, blaster. So they're, they're doing their job right there. I almost forgot to do this, but here is this guy from Soundwave. Pretty much the same height, but they, their heads are bigger. Let me pull this off and flip out the hand. This guy had this weird elbow like that. But you know what? This is a size comparison. I have a review for Acoustic Wave and his cassettes. Here is an, an animal bot. They were able to make him look full, basically, more than they were able to do with these guys. But Ravage comes out to be a little bit longer than both of these guys, to be honest. So there's that comparison. And here is the official masterpiece. Slightly shorter. I think fans always tried to give them a more cartoon accurate height where they come up to his knees basically. All right, here's Recorder. You see what he looks like. You saw what he looked like when I was putting him into his correct mode. I keep forgetting to take this daggone sticker off. But nice, clean. I, one thing gives me pause is just the bag back there. I can't remember if that's cartoon accurate or not. It probably was in a couple scenes. But you have this detail that they left in the the cartoon from the toy and yeah it's cool make sure you don't have this shifted over like that that's that's not right if I'm not mistaken here is the default face they gave him he has these different eyes I'm pretty sure he looked like that in some scenes I don't like it um, the best thing to do is this hinge right there pull that these pegs out of there and the face pegs into the front panel and comes off like that. So he has another face that is similar to that one, neutral, but it looks a little bit better to me. Here, here we go. I like that a lot more. The eyes aren't as separated. Then he has the straight up joyous face right here. Which is cool, he could be laughing or yelling out or something, but he, he's happy. Now he's not happy. He's either yelling at somebody or he's like, yeah, in terror, depending on how you have the head position. But you can see the neck. He has one more face, so I'm gonna get to that. Here's the neck. I'm seeing a fan story doesn't really care about designing a good looking neck anymore. It, that used to be one of their main things where they definitely would have a solid neck and it just hinges up and down. There's no ball joint in here, so I don't know why they didn't do that. It's just basically on the mushroom peg right there. So there's that. And here's his just regular smile face. This will be the face that I probably leave on him more than anything because he's, he's happy, but he's not overly happy with his mouth open. So. So that's good. And here's the back of the head. But lift this forward and we can go ahead and slide this off of this thing right here. So now we have that. And the head is supposed to go up and down on that. 
that's what makes me go up and down. All right, this head actually goes on the same way. They didn't need to design it like, like this because this face is removable, but none of the other faces are compatible. But here we are with that. If you want them to look like the comic book or a cart, the toy, eh, I don't like it. I never liked it. They redesigned it on the cartoon and I am strictly cartoon accurate. Screw you. And then that one episode where he fought, fought Soundwave, we have this cavity right here, which is shaped like that. And we can just, with his fist shut completely, like this with the thumb fully inside, we can fit the fist in there. And now he can blast Soundwave away. Yeah. But anyhow, here's this size comparison. Let me get Soundwave's legs straight up. And I'm going to put them face to face. You know, they're pretty much eye to eye. I always felt like Blaster should have been a little bit taller. The toy was a lot taller. The toy was taller than everybody. <laughs> but I feel like if they want to make them the same height, I guess that might be accurate on the scale chart. But I would have liked Blaster to be somewhat taller than Soundwave. Why can't I seem to get his freaking body straight? All right, here's something I did not try on Soundwave to see if these Blaster cassettes could fit him. And yeah. They go in, the animal ones seem to go fit in easier with both of these than the actual eject and rewind. Um, let's see if it can fit in the front. Yeah, that seems to be causing an issue. Right there. Yeah. Ah. If you can't get it to shut, I wouldn't even bother. I'm not, the other ones aren't transformed yet, but I did want to try at least one guy. And this guy is probably the easiest to get into the cassette. In both spots, this chest is shaped differently because he doesn't have any like side panels grabbing like Soundwave sound has. So I think they probably did that on purpose. And I can't get that to shut, and I'm not even gonna try to force it. The gun fits in just like they fit on every figure, where there's a peg hole in the inside of the fingers or in the inside of the palm. You gotta wrap the fingers around, make sure you get it behind the guard first and whatnot. But there you go with that. The articulation, the head rotates, doesn't tilt side to side, looks up a bit. Shoulders do that. So to do this, if you have the arm pulled down properly, you get bicep swivel and you get a double jointed elbow. You can't really, I see the hinge right there, but you can't, I never actually see it with my eyes bend. Oh, well, wait, wait, yeah, I see it now. The hinge is like up in there, so you don't see this part bend. So oh, there we are, and that's what the back of the elbow looks like. The wrist is nice. It goes out. It goes in to accommodate for him pushing his own button. Thumb is on the ball at the base, and you get a hinge right there. So you get all that. Each finger moves independently. The lower fingers have a knuckle in the middle, while the, the index finger has a second joint at the tip so the finger can go out more straight so he can point and tell his little minions where to go you get rotation and the waist full 360 and they give you the tiniest bit just like on Soundwave the tiniest bit of ab crunch the, the deformation space has an awesome ab crunch in fact, I'm going to say this right now. If you have the deformation space, there's no reason to get this unless you want the cassettes. 
uh, the deformation space didn't feel as heavy and nice and wasn't painted like this, but the articulation was awesome. And I remember the transformation being easier. If the legs click back that much and they can kick forward more than 90, they go out all the way. Thigh rotation and you get double jointed knees. So that's great for fans toys. If this actually had ab crunch and he could look up more than that, that would have been great. But this is a great pose right there off top without me even trying. I like it. It's awesome ankle pivot that much that much and you can rotate the foot all the way this hinge is decently fairly tight for now so you can get him into poses where he is leaning forward like this or coming forward just flatten the feet up and you're good to go I like it I love it that's great. That's good. It's somewhat dynamic in some places. Things that would have made it better. Better ab crunch. The legs, I'm going to say they're good. And if you had some kind of butterfly joint to super accommodate for being able to push that button, that would have been great. And ability to look up more, maybe tilt the head side to side. Here is Fans Toys version of Perceptor. And Magic Square's version of Optimus Prime, which I believe MP44 is the exact same height. Maybe he's a tad taller, I'm not sure, but as you can see, he's a tad taller than Blaster, and Perceptor is a little bit shorter than Blaster, just like on the cartoon. And here is Transformers Kingdom Legacy Blaster? I don't remember. <laughs> I said what I said about the cassettes. I said what I said about him. Just, he's great besides, oh yeah, wait, wait, here's one thing. Out of packaging, this knee. That was like immediate. Um, One thing I, I wanna go into. <laughs> Whoever designs these, it seems like you'll have nice pegging systems in one area where things are solid, but then they don't put ratchets or something at that lower knee, and it makes you wonder, like, why did they, why did they do that? Because fans' toys, they're made out of die cast and plastic. They're super heavy. If It seems like if you move something a little bit more often than others. Actually, you know what? There is a ratchet right there in there but it doesn't like lock in the place. It doesn't seem right there for whatever reason. So it's only loose on that side for me. I don't know if anybody else has that issue, but um, as I was saying, they tend to put things on pins and over time they get loose. Some stuff, as soon as you transform it once, it is loose permanently and it never goes back. In this guy's case, I've transformed it like three times and I'm so somewhat still good to go. But yeah, be, be wary. If I wasn't a reviewer, I probably would transform the thing once and turn it back and never do it again. Well, here they all are in their alt modes right here. Let's look at Recorder Blaster first. Reminiscent of what it looks like. It is asymmetrical with the tape deck kind of over to the left side of the front of its body. So you can have the volume button right here, volume knob. I'm guessing that's what that is. You have the speakers in their spot. Everything looks appropriate. I guess if it transformed correctly, one leg would have to be longer than the other. This is something I never noticed. <laughs> like I had the original blaster and I never noticed that. Well, I, I, I probably remembered when I actually had it that the chest was more to the left of its body because it still had this button on the front of its chest. But in the cartoon, it did not have that button. So, yeah. Anywho, this thing feels solid and heavy. Feels like a brick. I was unable to reorient this gun right here. 
so that it can be like pointed up like an antenna. Here's the bottom down here, but it comes together as mostly a cohesive unit. Only thing that gives me pause is these flaps right there, just hanging out. I transformed this a couple times and I didn't get that more flush, so it is what that is right there. And I don't know why they painted that button, but they painted that button. Lifting it with this handle, yeah, the handle is not sturdy at all. It does not like latch together as a cohesive thing at all. So, here we go with that. But here is fast forward as a cassette. I put Autobot logos on everything. So you have to decide which side looks more like a cassette to you. This has more deco, but this is plain. Both of them have like the tape spinner things in there. I don't know why I didn't just show both of these at once. Same guy, basically. They are twins, but not twins. They, <laughs> if you read the comics or watch the cartoon, it's like they look exactly the same, but they don't treat them as though they're related in any type of way. But these all feel nice because they have a lot of die cast and they're heavy. Like real cassettes aren't this heavy. Here is loudspeaker. Looks like what you would think he would look like. Um, only thing that gives me pause on this guy is I can't get this front to like close in completely. It doesn't create a problem with sticking it into his chest, but it drives me nuts. This side seems like completely flush. But I have not been able to get this one to stay, so that pretty much is what it is. And here is Amplifier. Yeah. Nice cohesive things. Like, I guess if I didn't know what Transformers were, but I knew what micro cassettes were, I would think that this was a micro cassette, but I would be wondering what the heck are all these dang on panels? So I wouldn't know it changes into something. But yeah, they all feel nice and look nice. Comparisons. Here is my masterpiece sound wave. I have him in permanent alt mode for things like this. Well. Yeah, he's smaller, but wider, just like Fans Toys or Robot Paradise's, um, whatever his fake name is, their version of Soundwave. But yeah, amazingly, I was able to take one of the Fans Toys cassettes and put it inside of him, and it, it works. Because of the way the tape deck open door is made, I would only put two in here at once. I believe they must be thicker than the Takara Tell Me version of the Masterpiece cassette, and I am correct. Yeah, they are th slightly less wide, but definitely thicker in the back. So there's that, this is uh, frenzy. I'm, I'm going to go with frenzy. The masterpiece figures are supposed to be cartoon <laughs> accurate. So I'm going to call this one frenzy. And here is one of Robot Paradise's sound wave, acoustic wave. That's what it's called. One of his cassettes right here. The old fake laser beak. Um, on figure action the other day, they were saying, you wouldn't have anybody in tape mode, but apparently I do. This has been inside of Acoustic Wave's chest the whole time. I like this tape detail on Laserbeak, and I think, hmm, 
I can't remember if their Ravage had tape detail, but these Autobot tapes, they don't, they didn't even go through the trouble of giving them fake cassette detail, like at all compared to this. But you know what I've just realized I didn't do? This button comes out. It's a very satisfying door opening situation. But I'm gonna admit this button is harder to press than you would imagine. When I first pressed it, it would not open and I was like, what the heck? So I just forced it. Now it satisfyingly opens. You get that detail in there. You push that back one. You take this cassette, take another cassette. There is nothing really to hold this into place besides it being angled back there, but that's what's keeping it actually in the door. We'll shut that. And then we could do this. Oh, brother. This was not getting stuck for me until now. Let me try this guy. Yeah, I, I don't know what's different with the blue one, but yeah. And if you want that one to come forward, you press this button down, it shifts it forward. And now we can get him out. The best people to fit in there is their ram horn and steel jaw. But now that we've tested those, let's try this laser beak. If it's in there and let's try this frenzy let's let's call them rumble right now just to make people satisfied nope <laughs> it's too wide so one side is sticking out there you go with that anywho comes together nice and solidly these come together for the most part nice and solidly the best one is the, the ram horn or amplifier. Like I said, this one has this side that pops out and doesn't want to stick in. Regardless of what I want to do. And these, these chest panels right there are supposed to plug in. They kind of sit up and don't want to plug in themselves, so. That's what you gotta worry about with these. And I don't know what's not squeezed with this, why I wouldn't sit in, but overall, end of the day, I like the blaster the most. And these are just cool accessories, more than action figures. Altogether, they look nice, but yeah. I wouldn't be rushing out the door to pay a hundred and something dollars for them separately. Anywho, if you need to see the transformation, make sure you watch my T-Man 978's how-to video where I transform the cassettes in one video and recorder in another video. So check that out. Linked in the description. Thank you for watching. Until next time, T-Man 978, out of here. Figure action. That one's me. Join the Syndicate Toy Hunters Facebook group. Link in the description. Click, click the videos. Click the f***ing videos, baby. Click, click the videos. You should really click these videos. Click, click the videos. Click those f***ing videos, baby. Click, click the videos.